Kids, I'm Laura Vitale. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you a recipe that a lot of you are going to freak out when you see the title. I'm going to make soft pretzels. Now, this, re this recipe has been requested at least between 50 times to 60 times a day. No lie, no exaggeration. It's been requested a whole lot. And, you know, I hesitated for a while to make this recipe only because if you know anything about my cooking, then you know I like to make things that are very easeable very easy and approachable. And for me, soft pretzel has always been a kind of a difficult recipe to, to put together. It has a lot of different steps. So of course I buckled down, I worked on this recipe day and night for a couple weeks now, and I found that, you know, I try to make it as easy as possible for you, but it's incredible. There really is nothing like homemade pretzels. I never knew, I never thought I'd be saying that because I'm not a very big pretzel eater, but this recipe has got it all. It's easy, it's quick, it's just a couple of steps and it turns out perfect every time. I've tested it over and over again to make sure it's perfect. So now that I've got it down, I'm thrilled to be able to share it with you. But before we get started, we've got to go over the ingredients. You'll need some all-purpose flour, some water, melted butter, some sugar, salt, dried yeast, an egg, baking soda, vegetable oil, kosher salt, and that's pretty much about it. It's as easy as that. Now, um, what can I tell you about this recipe besides what I've already told you? Nothing. It's that easy. So let's get started. I have my big mixer here because in this case, you know, normally I've been making things by hand all the time, but this needs to kind of knead for a while, so it's much easier to use a dough hook. So in this bowl, I am going to put water, and to make sure it's like it's warm water, it has to be warm. So anywhere between 110 and 115 degrees is perfect. And the sugar and salt, I'm going to leave that as is. And then I'm going to take one package of dry yeast and I'm going to just snip it like so and sprinkle it on top. Now you want to make sure the water is warm, otherwise it will not activate the yeast. If it doesn't activate the yeast, then you're not going to be able to make your pretzels. It's easy as that. Now you're going to leave that alone, no mixing, no nothing, for about five minutes or until the uh, yeast kind of starts to foam a little bit and that means it's activating, which is exactly what you want. Now to get all the measurements for this recipe, you need to go to www.laurinthekitchen.com. You know I always put my recipes on there because it's much, much easier for you to print and have the recipe right then and there rather than going forward and backward to write things down as this video goes on. So make sure you visit my website to get the recipe with the full ingredients of everything. I'm going to leave that for five minutes and then come back to it. My yeast is starting to foam. You can see what's happening there with that color. That's exactly what we're looking for. That means the yeast is activating. Now I'm going to turn this on, on low. I'm going to mix this up. And now I'm going to start adding the flour. We're looking for about, you're going to probably use about four and a half to cu five cups of flour total. Uh, when you make bread, it's, it's everything, when you make some sort of dough like this, it's really about temperature, you know, the temperature of the day and all. So this recipe will take between four and a half to five cups. And I'm going to use it, just put it in little by little, one cup at a time. And make sure it's incorporated by the time I use somewhat incorporated anyway. I'm also going to put in my melted butter. That's going to give that beautiful buttery texture, exactly what we're looking for another cup because that's about incorporated and as you can see I'm leveling it off because I want to make sure it's just one cup perfect because with baking you got to make sure you're pretty pretty precise. And I'm just going to keep adding my flour until the dough has pretty much come together and then I'll tell you what the next step is. Now that it's come together in a dough, I, I, in a bowl and I've only used four and a half cups of flour, I'm going to crank it up to medium speed like that. And I'm going to let that mix for about five to seven minutes or until the dough is really nice and smooth. And if you don't have a mixer like this, you can always do it by hand. You can just go ahead and knead it, which obviously it's going to take longer, probably about 10 to 15 minutes of kneading until I get to the consistency that it needs to be. But that's it. I'm going to let it go for five minutes. Here we go. That looks perfect. I've only been doing it for about seven minutes. I'm letting it go and it's been just you know, kneading itself while I have been conversating with my husband. Now I have an, a bowl here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to oil this with some vegetable oil because I don't want this to stick because this needs to sit in here and rise for about an hour or until it's doubled in volume. I'm just going to, don't use olive oil for this only because olive oil has a very strong flavor and we're not trying to get olive oil flavor into our pretzels. So I'm just going to set that aside and I'm going to take the dough off the hook. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It's still a little bit sticky, which is very good. 
We don't want it to be too, come on, Laura. And to think I work out. That's embarrassing. Okay, I'm just gonna take the dough out. That's good. I'm just gonna pull it together very quickly. Just like that, kind of put it into a, see it's nice and smooth. Put this into your oiled bowl. And I'm going to oil the top as well, just so that it doesn't form a dry skin. Whoops, just like that. Can I make more noise? Oy. Cover this with the plastic wrap. You can also use like a kitchen towel or something like that. I'm going to do it both ways because I don't want any gaps. I want this to be nicely sealed. And now you're going to pop this into a warm place and you're going to let it rise for about an hour. I like to put this in the microwave. Obviously you don't want to turn the microwave on, it's off. But that's nice and warm and it's away from any kind of drafts or anything like that because if you put this in a place where there's a lot of drafts, it won't rise. So I'm just going to put it in there and let it hang out for an hour. As you can see, my dough has risen quite a bit and that's exactly what we want it to look like. It's doubled in size, definitely. Before we get started on working on that, we need to prep our baking sheets. Now what I've done is I have two baking sheets that I've lined with parchment paper and I'm going to spray these with some nonstick spray or you can just easily brush these with some vegetable oil and I'm doing it quite heavily because I want to just make sure that these pretzels don't stick to my baking sheet. That's all. Now also what you need to do is you need to take a large, as you can see, what I have there is my roasting pan and I filled it with about eight cups of water and I put in our baking soda and let that come up to a boil. It's a science thing. I don't know why it works. I never did good in science at school. So let that come to a boil and also get your oven hot to 450. Those are the next steps. So now on to forming our pretzels. I'm going to sprinkle my counter with some flour. You're going to need extra flour on you. There we go. The dough, as you can see, it's really light. It's actually really light for a dough, which is perfect because this is going to make sure that your pretzels are nice and soft on the inside, but really delicious and crispy on the outside. Now I'm just going to cut this into 12. So I'm going to cut one half and cut six out of this half. Show you. Like that. And then that looks about right. And set this aside. Now you need to, well, I'm actually going to leave it just there. You need to work kind of quickly. And I've also gotten the egg beaten with a little bit of water. That's just to make an egg wash. Now I'm going to show you how to make the pretzel shape. You want to take your piece and you want to just roll this into a rope about 20 to 24 inches long and you want to make sure it's even it's like nice and even it's not really thick here and then really really thin at the edges okay gonna roll a little bit more in the center that looks about right then you're gonna make a U shape okay now you take the U shape and you take the bottoms and you pinch it that is your soft pretzel dun da da, -da! Okay, now I'm going to line these up on my baking sheet that I have sprayed with my nonstick cooking spray. And now I'm just going to continue with the remaining. Last one. Okay, now let's bring these to the boiling water so I can show you what the next step is. I have my watery baking soda mixture up to a boil and now I'm going to add my pretzels in it. And the pretzels are going to cook. I'm going to put two at a time. It's very important not to bring down the temperature of the water. And I'm going to cook them for one minute. One minute only. And then I'm going to put them back onto the baking sheet. Okie doke. Taking the last two out. Drain them well. Put them right back to the parchment paper lined baking sheet. Okay, let's go back to the counter for our final step before these bake. Now we just need to brush the pretzels with our egg wash, which was just one egg mixed with about a tablespoon of water, or you can use milk or cream or anything to kind of loosen it up. Just brush them all like so. Last step is to just sprinkle it on with a little salt. I'm using kosher salt, but you can use the rough sea salt. You could use whatever you want. You could also do a mixture of cinnamon sugar. That would work wonderful too. Totally up to you. 
Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions, you know, can you substitute yeast, can you substitute the baking soda, and the answer is no, because all of those ingredients do something to the recipe. If you wouldn't put yeast in it, you're not going to get them to rise. If you don't put the baking soda in the water, you're not going to get the texture that the, the soft pretzel is known for. So follow the recipe as is. There are no substitutions. It's as easy, easy as that. So I'm just going to finish these two. And now these are going to go into the oven, preheated 450 for 10 to 12 minutes until they're deeply golden brown. Now I baked these for 12 minutes and I let them cool just for like 10 minutes so that they're like nice and warm enough to handle, but they're not going to scorch my tongue. And as you can see, they're perfect. Got a slight little crust on the top, but they're really soft and fluffy. Oh, I gotta give this a bite. Perfect. Mm. Exactly what a soft pretzel should be, in my opinion. You know. I used to think mm. so good. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, I used to think making soft pretzels was going to be this big ordeal, but in reality, it only took about an hour and a half from start to finish. I mean, we had to let the, the dough raise for an hour, or, you know, rise for an hour, but that's really the longest part. It takes no time to put together. Our mixer did all the work. And then we just put them in the water. We foam them, put them in the water. We bake them. They're done. You have homemade soft pretzels on your table within an hour and a half. That is pretty impressive. I guarantee you, once you start making them at home, you'll find a reason to make them over and over and over again. And just remember, if you don't want to top these with salt, you can always top them with cinnamon sugar. You have sweet pretzels. Come on. You can do this. I did it. And I have the attention span of a poodle. I know you can. So go to www.learningkitchen.com, get the recipe, get in your kitchen, and start making them. Here you go.